Hello balloon artists. Today I'm going to show you how to make quince cotton ball. Hi, I'm Melanie from Balloon Artworks here in Derbyshire in the East Midlands. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make the character that I've created, Quince Cotton Ball. And he's a, the main character for my Quince Cotton Ball series of books, uh, which I've launched this year. There is a third book out that's just come out. Um, the really exciting thing that's just happened uh, for me this week is that the second book in the series, Quince Cotton Ball Enjoys a Rainy Day, has just hit the number one spot on Amazon in my category uh, for new releases. So that was a, a big surprise and uh, as you can imagine I'm, I'm thrilled. So um, we've got a different balloon characters in the Quince Cotton Ball series and over the coming weeks I'm going to sh show you how to make the different characters. So for demonstration purposes I'm going to be using a hand pump. If you've got a Legenda inflator or some other inflator you prefer to use, fine, use those. I love my Legenda, I use it all the time. Uh, but I know that not everybody has one so I'm using a hand pump. And we're going to start with a white 260. Okay, so that's one of these long um, thin balloons. And we're just going to inflate this a little bit. We're not going to use it all. So I've got a nice long tail here and then just let a little bit of air out and then tie a knot, okay? And if you need to know how to tie knots, anything like that, check out my other videos. Um, I've got some, some basic instructions on how to uh, tie knots, etc. Okay, so we first of all want to make a little soft bubble. So just twist a little bubble in your balloon and that's perhaps about two fingers or so and then give your balloon a squeeze and we want to make a loop of about five fingers or so. Okay and then make another uh, flower petal loop to match this. Okay so again we're looking for about five fingers and twist that all around. Okay and then we want to make another loop that is smaller than these two. So perhaps about three fingers and then just twist that and wrap that all around. Okay. And then at this point, you can break this off. So just give that balloon a squeeze. I've got a cutter on my work belt here and I'm just going to trap the air on each side and then I'm going to cut through the middle. Okay. I can let this go. Just take hold of that and I'm just going to tie a knot and that little bit of excess there and then wrap it all around so that I just kind of lose that in there. Okay, so that's what you've got. And what I want to do with this little bubble here, I'm going to do something called a pinch twist. But if you're not comfortable with pinch twists, you don't need to. So you can leave the little bubble as it is. Uh, but if you want to tidy it off a little bit, we'll do a pinch twist. So just get hold of that knot, roll it down a little bit along the neck. That makes this bubble a little bit softer. And then just grab hold of that knot, grab hold of that little bubble, twist it round. And that makes something called a pinch twist. And then take that bit of excess and just wrap it around. Now, this little pinch twist, it's just going to stabilize everything for you and keep those little feet, these are the little, uh, Quince's little feet, and we've got his little tail there. And then just, with your hand, just cup the uh, toes and just massage them up a little bit. So you'll see the difference. This one, this foot now is just going up ever so slightly. And we're just going to do the same on the other side, okay? It's just a very small detail, but it's the sort of thing that will make your balloon animals, your balloon creations stand out from other people's. Okay, so we've got the feet and we've got the tail. Next, you're going to need a six inch quick link. Okay, but if you don't have one of these six inch quick links, don't worry. If you've got a stock of 321s, you can use a white one of those. If you've got a stock of uh, 350s, you can use a 350. So um, don't feel the need to go out and buy these quick links, especially if you've got something else in stock that you can use. But I'm going to use a, 
a six inch quick link. Okay, so I'm just going to inflate that and I like to inflate it quite a bit uh, just to stretch out the latex and then I let the air out until I get a nice, this nice round shape. And that's perhaps about four inches or so, three and a half, four inches, and then tie a knot. Okay, so that's what you've got. Take your cluster of feet and tail and then just wrap that end in to the base, okay? And so we've got Quincy's feet, tail and his body. Whilst you're here, I hope you'll give the tutorial a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my future videos, which I publish on Tuesdays. And I will also leave a link in the description below to where you can find the Quince books on Amazon. There's a whole series coming out. Uh, three books are available at the moment and I've got more coming out soon. And the, all the characters, all the main characters are balloon animals. For those, so for those of you who are balloon artists, uh, you'll have a series of characters uh, and you're going to have the video instructions on how to make them available for free through my YouTube channel as well. So I really hope this is going to be a useful resource to you. So next we're going to make the ears and you're going to need a 160 in white. Okay, so again I'm using the hand pump. You can use a pocket pump if you prefer. I rarely use my pocket pump um, for inflating 160s tend to find you get a sort of a banding uh, across. Uh, but the important thing if you are using uh, the, the larger hand pump is to make sure that the 160 is positioned above the tip. It, you know, you don't want it over to one side. It needs to be directly um, above the, the tip of the hand pump. Okay, and then we want to inflate to about a tip of, oh, a couple of, three fingers or so. Before you tie off, just pinch your balloon, perhaps about two or three inches up and uh, twist, twist off a bubble and then you can just let go. Okay, so we've got this uninflated section here and then you want to just tie a knot, okay? So that's really important, this bit here. Okay, and then we want to make some large ears. Now, how large you want the ears to be, well, that's up to you, okay? So I've got a bubble. I'm going to make her ears of about, I don't know, seven, eight inches or so. So I've just wrapped the, uh, the balloon around and then I'm just going to twist that round, take that tail, wrap that around, okay? And then I want to make another ear to match this one. So I'm just going to make another bubble. And if they're not exactly... Uh, the same size, that's not critical. And then just pull those through to lock them in position, okay? And then you can break this off and tie. Next, you're going to need a white five inch round. And again, I like to over inflate this um, just to stretch out the latex, latex. So we're getting that light bulb shape, which is uh, an indication that, you know, you've gone a bit too far. Uh, inflating that so it's uh, it's over inflated slightly and then I want to let some of the air out okay so I want a nice round shape okay and then at this point I just kind of pinch the neck I haven't tied it yet I just want to make sure that this is nice and soft and malle malleable okay so tie a knot in the top and then if you need to, just grab hold of that knot and just roll it along the neck so that it is up towards the nozzle. So next, take the ears and grab hold of the, the nozzle. And you want to place the nozzle from the ears directly onto the nozzle of this white five inch round, okay? And with your forefinger, you just want to push that through into the base of the balloon and you can see a little bit at the bottom here that is just slightly darker the latex is very slightly thicker and that's roughly where you're aiming for okay and then pull your finger out so you've caught hold of the uh, nozzle here and then just give that a twist so you're holding on to the knots here and you're twisting on this side of the knots 
okay? Next, take the tip of your quick link, and just push the air out, okay? And you can take that tip and just wrap it around that cluster of knots and then just tie a knot, okay? You can, if you want, just use a little bit of uh, 160 to tie, tie off uh, the head if you want to first, if you're more comfortable with that. Um, but this is just one way of eliminating uh, a bit of bulk around here. Next, take another 160 in white and we're going to inflate this about halfway. We're not, we don't need it all, maybe a little bit more than halfway. Okay, so we've got a nice long tail, let out a little bit of air and then tie. Okay, we just want to make a little flower petal twist of perhaps about three fingers or so. And then take that neck and nozzle and just pass that through the center there. Okay, and then let's take our quince rabbit. And we just want to wrap the arms around the neck and just decide how long you want the arms to be. And then just twist off another bubble, make another little hand to match this one. Okay. And then you can take hold of points and just wrap these paws together. Okay. And then at this point, we can break off the rest. And then just tie a little knot. Okay, wrap that around. If you need to trim off any more excess, do so. I like to shape the ears as well. I'll just give them a bit of shaping. Okay. So we just need to draw the face. So for drawing the face, I start with two large black circles and I draw these either with a, a brush tip Sharpie or a chisel tip Sharpie. The brush tip Sharpie gives a nicer depth of color. Um, the uh, chisel tip is much quicker. Uh, the brush tip will take longer to dry, the chisel tip tip will um, dry much more quickly. So it's horses for courses really, it just depends on what the situation is. If you are in a line work situation, which you know generally we're not at the moment, so uh, but when line work does uh, come back you might want to use the chisel tip, uh, but for the moment I will use the brush tip. So I'm just drawing two large circles. And I like using these because you're able to cover a greater surface area in a short space of time. So I'm just gonna, you know, the bigger the nib, the quicker it is to apply. So next I'm going to draw the nose and I like this cerise wildberry pink for the nose. And I draw two little circles very close together. So he's got a heart shaped nose. So I begin by drawing one small circle and then right next to it, I draw another one. Okay. And then I make a sort of a little point, little triangle below those two little circles. And then I just fill that in. And I find that doing the heart that way I get a much more even heart. If I try and draw a heart freehand, I will get a heart that's slightly lopsided. And it's, it doesn't matter particularly, um, but it just depends on what sort of look you're looking for. I find I get a much more evenly shaped heart if I do it this way. So then take a fine point black Sharpie and just outline that little heart in black. And in the books, Quince displays a whole range of expressions, uh, but today I'm going to give him a smiley face. If you want to see some of his other expressions, if he's looking puzzled or surprised or 
uh, sh shocked. Yeah, check it, check out the box and you'll be able to see uh, the different expressions. But I'm just going to give him a big smiley face. Okay, and I like to do three little dots on either side of his mouth. So Quince generally has rosy pink cheeks and to create those I have this palette of uh, different shades of blusher. So I just um, apply blusher that I that I want. I'm going to go for this one. I just put a little bit of blusher on my finger and then just apply that here. So my, my husband does find it amusing that I have more makeup in the house for my balloons than I do for myself. I, I have a lipstick and that's pretty much it. And every 10 years I'll buy myself a new one. <laughs> that, uh, that will last for the next 10 years. So um, there you go, that's the blusher for uh, Quincy's pink cheeks. So just one word of caution about the blusher is it doesn't dry completely so it can smudge off so if that is going to be uh, a problem you know if you think the children are going to get the uh, blusher all over themselves then you might want to use a sharpie a pink pale pink sharpie instead and then I do three little whiskers on either side okay so whilst we've been drawing the rest of the face the black eyes have dried so we can use our Edding 750 paint pen and just draw a circle, a white circle and then I like to do just a little smaller circle for the high eye highlights and then do the same on the other eye. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. And over the coming weeks, I'll be showing you how to make some of the other characters in the Quince Cotton Ball series. So from Quince and myself, I'll see you in the next video.